Jonathan Majors uh, was accused of domestic violence by Grace Jabari. Mm -hmm. Well, now she is going to be facing her own set of domestic or her own set of assault charges in a domestic violence case. That Jabari is expected to voluntarily report to the NYPD's 10th precinct in the near future. Fresh evidence has emerged in Jonathan Major's ongoing court case, potentially representing a crucial turning point he has been eagerly anticipating. Remarkably, this newly unveiled footage has the potential to result in legal charges against his ex-girlfriend, who is the individual identified as the alleged victim in this case. So, what exactly is going on? Jonathan Major's uh, was was accused of domestic violence by Grace Jabari. Mm -hmm. Well, now she is going to be facing her own set of domestic or her own set of assault charges in a domestic violence case. In the month of September, legal representatives acting on behalf of Jonathan Majors forwarded a compelling video to the presiding judge in his Manhattan domestic violence case. According to the attorneys, this video provides visual evidence demonstrating that his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari, appeared unharmed just eight minutes after the alleged incident where Majors was accused of assaulting her. This pivotal sidewalk security camera footage, exclusively acquired by Insider and subsequently described as highly significant by Major's legal team, offers an unprecedented level of clarity in depicting Grace Jabari's condition shortly after her altercation with the Kang the Conqueror actor on a Chinatown street corner in March. In the footage, Grace Jabari can be observed in a distressed state, sobbing and pacing as she utilizes her right hand to perform various tasks such as holding a cell phone, donning and removing a heavy coat, and adjusting her long hair, pulling it into and out of a bun. This is particularly noteworthy as it appears to conflict with the allegations put forth by the prosecutors, who assert that Majors had fractured her middle finger by forcefully twisting her hand during the altercation. Moreover, Majors stands accused of slapping Jabari with enough force to cause a cut and bleeding to her ear. However, this video, which documents her interaction with a group of strangers outside a luxury condominium building in Soho, fails to depict any evident injury of that nature. Additionally, Jabari can be heard in the March 25th video Video, telling the three strangers that she is Major's girlfriend. No way! One of the men responds, and that she'd left her phone and purse in their car after they fought, and the actor quote unquote ran off. Miss Jabari was not only completely unharmed, but was describing what had just happened by repeatedly insisting that Mr. Majors had texts from another woman on his phone and making no reference to suffering physical violence of any sort. Chaudhry said in her court papers. Majors makes a brief appearance at the end of the clip as the trio offers Jabbery cab money and the use of their cell phones. It's a non-speaking cameo. Majors, who is himself looking for the driver, says nothing as he walks past the group on the sidewalk, ignoring Jabari as she asks, where's my bag? It was in the car. The clip ends with Jabari and the three strangers following Majors out of the shot. According to the defense, before parting ways for the night, Jabari and Majors would fight for another five minutes, though always in the presence of security cameras and eyewitnesses, including the three strangers and the driver. According to Chaudhry, at no point in those final five minutes did Majors strike Jabari. Instead, the video shows Miss Jabari wildly grabbing and clawing at him, ripping off his coat buttons and tearing his coat pocket in the process, leaving the actor with scratches on his arm and face, the lawyer says in her papers. Jabari then left with the three strangers for two hours of drinking and dancing at Lucy's nightclub in the lower levels of the Moxie Hotel on the Bowery in Lower Manhattan. Meanwhile, an additional video filed by Major's lawyer singles out one moment, showing Jabari being led and twirled ballroom dance style by her supposedly broken finger as she dances with a man at the club. Prosecutors failed to flag still more evidence favorable to Majors, the lawyer alleges, including statements made by the driver who witnessed the couple's midnight fight as, over the course of 20 minutes, it repeatedly spilled in and out of his hired car and onto the streets of Chinatown and Soho. Additionally, there were some text messaged which showcased Jabari admitting that Majors had done nothing wrong. In the alleged text exchange between Majors and Jabari, she wrote, They assured me that you won't be charged. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. The texts also show the woman also saying this was not an attack and denying that Major strangled her. She allegedly wrote that the 911 call had to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior. Out of care. Now, with all this evidence, there were claims that Jabari might soon be charged with DV. 
This was according to the office of the DCPI for the New York Police Department, who exclusively confirmed the domestic violence charge to the messenger on Monday 23rd. The DCPI told the messenger that Jabari is expected to voluntarily report to the NYPD's 10 precinct in the near future after the actor filed a counter complaint against her back in June. According to a law enforcement source, Jabari, who was overseas at the time, will be issued a desk appearance ticket, which police issue to require a suspect to appear in court to answer charges. However, on Tuesday, October 24th, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office responded to the major's motion to dismiss with a 115-page document. In the filing obtained by Variety, prosecutors say they are attempting to get a copy of a London Metropolitan Police report from September 2022, which they believe is relevant to their domestic violence allegations. While it is unclear what that report contains, the filing references medical care obtained by Jabari at that time. Jabari is a citizen of the UK, and Majors was in London during that period, filming season two of the Disney Plus Marvel series, Loki. This development comes a day before Majors has to return to court for his domestic violence case. Wednesday's court appearance is expected to be one of the final pretrial hearings before the judge rules on whether to proceed with or dismiss the case. The lengthy filing from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office is in response to the actor's motion to dismiss the case. It does not entirely lay out the DA's case, though it is intended to provide enough detail to move the case toward trial. Variety previously reported that additional alleged AB victims of Majors are cooperating with the DA's office. The filing also alleges that Majors' legal team has leaked and misrepresented court evidence, as well as attempted to have police create a wanted poster with Jabari's photo. It also dismisses the idea that the DA has any plans to prosecute Jabari for domestic violence alleged by Majors in a counterclaim contradicting recent media reports that claimed such an action was imminent. The document also offers new details on the events that led to Majors' arrest. On March 25th, he and Jabari were taking a private car service from a Brooklyn party to their Chelsea apartment, according to the filing. Jabari, who worked as a movement coach alongside Majors on Disney's Marvel tentpole Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, saw a text message on Majors' phone that read, Wish I was kissing you right now. She allegedly took the phone out of his hands to see who sent the message. Majors then began grabbing the right side of Miss Jabari's body and prying Miss Jabari's right middle finger off the phone, causing bruising, swelling, and substantial pain. The filing continues that Majors then grabbed Miss Jabari's arm and right hand and proceeded to twist Miss Jabari's forearm, causing substantial pain to her finger and arm. The defendant then struck Miss Jabari's right ear, causing a laceration to the back of her ear and substantial pain. Meanwhile, Priya Chowdhury, who serves as Jonathan Major's attorney, has refrained from making specific comments on this matter. However, she has previously expressed her strong belief in Major's innocence and her view that Jabari should face legal consequences for her actions. On August 4th, Chaudhry said in a statement to Daily Mail, Jonathan Majors has been waiting for 132 days to clear his name of these false allegations, while the NYPD waits to arrest his accuser upon her New York return. And on August 3rd, the attorney said, 131 days ago, authorities unjustly cuffed Jonathan Majors in his own home, hauling him off to jail, based on the word of a woman now hunted by the NYPD. Bravely, Jonathan Majors laid bare to the NYPD the relentless alcohol-fueled AB he suffered at the hands of Grace Jabari, an enduring nightmare in their relationship. Now, as soon as Jabari sets foot back in New York, the NYPD stands ready to arrest her. For an excruciating four months, Jonathan Majors, the real victim in this shameful ordeal, has had his life, career, and reputation torn apart. Yet he remains unwavering in his determination to be absolved from this harrowing ordeal. On June 27, she said that the NYPD had found probable cause to arrest Jabari. Chaudhry said, last week for the first time, Mr. Majors met with the NYPD to present them with evidence of what really happened on that night. Within hours of viewing the evidence and conducting their own thorough investigation, the NYPD found probable cause to arrest Grace Jabari for assaulting Jonathan Majors. 
On June 20th, the attorney called on the district attorney to initiate proceedings against Ms. Jabari, holding her accountable for her crimes. And on May 9th, Chaudhry claimed that the fact Majors was arrested and not Jabari highlights the racial bias that permeates the criminal justice system. However, in an unexpected twist, it appears that the court has rejected Jonathan Majors' request to have the case against him dismissed. On the 25th of October, this surprising turn of events occurred when Judge Michael Gaffey issued his ruling during a court hearing held in Manhattan. His decision paves the way for the case to proceed to trial. For context, in March of 2023, Jonathan Majors, the prominent actor known for his roles in films like Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and Creed III, found himself entangled in a maelstrom of controversy and legal proceedings when he was arrested in New York City. The arrest stemmed from an alleged domestic dispute between him and his partner, Grace Jebbery, which unfolded in a Manhattan apartment. The New York City Police Department issued a statement regarding the incident. They disclosed that on the fateful Saturday, March 25th, 2023, at approximately 11.14 a.m., they received a 911 call that led them to the apartment located in the vicinity of West 22nd Street and 8th Avenue, within the jurisdiction of the 10th Precinct. At the scene, officers encountered a 33-year-old male identified as Jonathan Majors, embroiled in a domestic dispute with a 30-year-old female, Grace Jabbery. Miss Jabbery reported to the police that she had been assaulted during the altercation. As a result of this, Mr. Majors was taken into custody without resistance. Miss Jabbery sustained minor injuries to her head and neck and was subsequently transported to a local hospital, where she was listed in stable condition. Following his arrest, Jonathan Majors faced a slew of charges, including strangulation, assault, and harassment. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office soon formalized these charges with documents indicating multiple misdemeanor counts. These included three counts of assault in the third degree, aggravated harassment in the second degree, three counts of attempted assault in the third degree, and harassment in the second degree. The charges were directly tied to the domestic violence incident, and it marked a turning point in Major's life and career. As news of the allegations spread, the repercussions within the entertainment industry were swift. Several companies and projects distanced themselves from the actor. In mid-April, it was confirmed that Jonathan Major's public relations firm, The Lee Day Company, had decided to sever their professional ties with him in light of the charges he faced. Furthermore, Entertainment 360, a talent management company, also discontinued their association with the actor. The fallout extended beyond professional relationships and impacted Major's career prospects. He was no longer in contention for at least two upcoming film projects. The actor was removed from consideration for a film adaptation of Walter Mosley's 2004 novel, The Man in My Basement, a project in which he was also expected to serve as an executive producer. Additionally, he was no longer being considered for a biographical film about the late musician Otis Redding. Jonathan Majors also faced the loss of an advertising opportunity. He was set to feature in an ad campaign for Major League Baseball's Texas Rangers, but this engagement was canceled in light of the charges against him. In any case, Majors has not been alone during these trying times. His girlfriend, Megan Good, has defended and stood by him through it all. Jonathan Majors and Megan Good's love story officially commenced in May 2023. The public first caught wind of their budding romance when they were spotted at the Alamo Draft House in Los Angeles, sharing an evening at the movies. However, their early days were far from typical, as this revelation came against the backdrop of Jonathan Majors grappling with serious legal troubles. He had virtually attended court sessions to face allegations of assault and harassment. During these trying times, Megan Good emerged as a steady pillar of support in Jonathan Major's life. Her presence by his side served as a source of strength, providing comfort and reassurance as he navigated the turbulent waters of his legal predicament. Only two days after their relationship went public, an insider close to the couple shared insights with People magazine. They revealed that Jonathan and Megan had, in fact, been friends for some time prior to their romance taking center stage. The source emphasized the remarkable support that Megan Good extended to Jonathan Majors during his challenging phase. Megan and Jonathan have maintained a friendship for some time, the source said. Megan has shown considerable support towards him, the insider continued. It seems their relationship has developed further from that point. May 22nd provided the public with another glimpse into the enchanting world of Jonathan Majors and Megan Good. 
The couple was captured in an endearing moment, holding hands as they disembarked from an airplane, fresh from a journey that took them from the bustling streets of New York City to the sunny shores of Los Angeles. This voyage was more than just a simple trip. It was a testament to the depth of their connection. The image of them walking hand in hand was not merely an expression of their affection for one another, but also a profound symbol of their bond's strength. It spoke volumes about their commitment to facing the trials and tribulations of life together, with the unspoken understanding that they were stronger as a united front. On June 20th, the unwavering support of Megan Good for Jonathan Majors once again took center stage as she accompanied him to a courtroom appearance. The couple made a striking entrance, hand in hand, as they ventured into the judicial arena and left it together. This public display of unity not only emphasized their commitment, but also showcased their readiness to face adversity as a cohesive team. Jonathan Majors, dressed in a brown suit, approached the court proceedings with respect and composure. His interactions with the judge indicated a deep understanding of the scrutiny he faced, and Megan Good's presence by his side was a symbol of strength and solidarity. This courtroom visit was a significant turning point in their relationship, solidifying their commitment to one another and demonstrating their willingness to face life's challenges together. June 28th brought further insights into the dynamics of their relationship. A source close to Megan Good divulged to people that her friends were fully supportive of her decisions. Despite the backlash she may have faced for her choice to be with Jonathan Majors during his legal struggles, her friends stood by her. The source emphasized that while this situation might not be ideal, Good's friends respected her autonomy and understood her need for a fresh start after a difficult divorce from her ex-husband, Devon Franklin. It's obviously not the best situation, but they're letting her make her own decisions, the source said. It's been a little stunning to see her go from ex-husband Devon Franklin, with Faith at the center of their marriage, to John, but also understandable why she'd go for someone who's totally different after being with the same person for so long and not having it work out. The source added that Good's divorce from Franklin was tough for her. Her divorce was very tough for her to process, and the decision to end the marriage is something both she and Devon took very seriously, the source said, adding that she has a really, really good heart. The source also added that Good and Major's relationship was growing more serious. She and Jonathan are taking it slow, but it's definitely progressing and getting more serious. They said, she wouldn't be out and about with him so publicly or be supporting him in his legal situation if the relationship didn't mean something to her. August 3rd saw Megan Good once again accompanying Jonathan Majors to court. The couple's public appearances together were evidence of the strength of their bond as they faced Majors' legal troubles as a team. This courtroom visit marked another chapter in their journey. It was clear that their relationship was not just a passing phase but something deep and meaningful. The public was taking note of their love story and the challenges they were willing to face together. On August 9th, Megan Good celebrated her 42nd birthday and Jonathan Majors was by her her side for the special occasion. The couple was photographed walking together in West Hollywood, California, showcasing the romantic connection that had grown between them. However, Majors did not make an appearance in Good's Instagram carousel celebrating her birthday, sparking curiosity among fans. This absence from her Instagram posts raised questions about the couple's preference for keeping certain aspects of their relationship private. It was a reminder that despite their public appearances, they were still entitled to their personal space and the freedom to share what they chose with the world. September 24th marked a significant moment in the relationship of Jonathan Majors and Megan Good. The couple made their first public statement about their relationship at the Congressional Black Caucus's 8th Annual Black and White Gala, co-hosted by Good and Lorenz Tate in Washington, D.C. In a heartwarming moment, Megan Good addressed the audience and, in a gesture of affection, handed the microphone to Jonathan Majors. Y'all, uh... Y'all heard the missus, so that's what it is. His response, referring to Good as the missus, set off a flurry of speculations about the status of their relationship. The missus reference left fans wondering whether the couple had taken their relationship to the next level. The speculation surrounding their relationship status was finally addressed on September 25th. A source confirmed to People that despite Jonathan Major's reference to Megan Good as the missus, they were not married. Their relationship, while deepening and growing more serious, remained in the dating phase. 
This clarification put to rest the rumors of a secret wedding and allowed the couple to maintain a level of privacy in their relationship. In any case, fans are feeling sorry for Majors because of what he is going through. One particular fan commented, Since day one I knew he was innocent, I feel sorry for the guy. He is a very talented actor, and I hope justice will be served. A second fan added, So I knew from jump there was something off regarding these allegations, and I didn't believe he'd harm anyone unless it was in self-defense. I hope she is charged criminally, and I hope Jonathan sues her like Johnny sued Amber. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.